Hello Beth the Phil, I hope everyone is doing well. Um, it's very exciting to report that since we last spoke, we have begun our parking lot minion. And to the person who said he would only come if I gave his car a car wash, I would say the following. I don't know anything about car washes, but I used to practice shrita, slaughtering, and if you need a clean cut in your car's antenna or your tires, I'd be happy to help you out. Today I want to talk about a topic related to this week's Torah portion, this week's Parsha, which is Korach, which, you may find this hard to believe, talks about a man named Korach. I'll allow for a moment for that to sink in. Speaking of sinking in, that's exactly what happened to Korach. His downfall, literally his downfall, was into the heart of the earth. The earth miraculously opened up and swallowed him and his 250 followers. Now who was Korach? Korach was a cousin of Moshe who engaged in an argument with Moshe. So I want to speak a little bit about fighting, and therefore we have invited a very important guest video videographer to join us today, and that is my wife Malki. Oh, stop. Hey, that wasn't in the script. I thought about showing you a real-life behind-the-scenes fight between us, but then I realized that in 15 years of marriage we have never fought once. Yes, we have. I don't think we have. All right, maybe we have. But here are some examples of our fights. I married the better spouse. No, I married the better spouse. Last I checked, I did. You're the better parent to our kids. No, you definitely are. It's my turn to take out the trash. No, I think it's my turn tonight. Okay, fine, I don't wanna fight anymore. You can take out the trash. Now, I'm certainly not even close to being an expert in this area, but my Rosh Hashiva, Rabbi Aaron Feldman, Dean of Nair Israel Rabbinical College, wrote a book on marriage which I find very enlightening. He entitled it, The River, the Kettle, and the Bird, based on a Talmudic passage that one who sees a river, a kettle, or a bird in a dream can look forward to peace. He says that in the beginning of the Torah, we read that God created just Adam, Adam, the first man. Then God said, Lo tov heyos Adam levado. It's not good for a man to be alone or lonely, so he created Chava, or Eve. So he asks a very basic question. It seems paradoxical that marriage was created to alleviate loneliness, yet so often one or both spouses feel so alone. He writes, the explanation in short is that marital unhappiness is caused by man's abuse of marriage. When an instrument is used without regard to the manufacturer's instructions, is it any wonder that it does not work efficiently or that it does not work at all? Yet this is exactly what happens to marriage. What then are the manufacturer's specifications for marriage? Now I want to preface the rest of this video by saying that there clearly are times when fighting and even the termination of marriage are often necessary. For, in for instance, if one spouse is, God forbid, abusive or cheats or is just a mean-spirited person, then of course there are valid reasons to not continue the marriage. We are discussing two normal healthy people. So he writes that a serious obstacle stands in the way of a successful marriage, the evil inclination within man. Man's evil inclination drives him to concentrate on his own physical desires, power, and prestige. In other words, to become a servant of himself rather than God. He continues, marriage makes it possible for man to overcome his inclination towards self-centeredness. It permits him to change the focus of his existence from lust gratification. He concludes, the only way to avoid or resolve marital discord is by building the marriage in accordance with its original plan, by using marriage as a vehicle for becoming concerned with another human being's welfare. The only counseling which can be effective is that which teaches marriage partners to become selflessly concerned with each other's pleasure and ego feelings, even at the expense of their own. Marriage will then become all God intended it to be, an instrument of human perfection and happiness. So let's work on this, and let's avoid being selfish and self-centered both in marriage and in life in general. Let's also figure out compromises. I propose a resolution to our garbage dilemma. I'll take the garbage out of the kitchen garbage can and I'll leave it on your bed, and you <laughs> will take it from your bed and bring it to the can outside. Gee, How does thanks. that sound? Take care, everybody.